How are you, sweetie? I am okay. I'm okay. I'm hanging in there just like everybody, I think, right now. Right, in the midst of all this madness, this global madness, right? Indeed. That, that needed to happen, actually, but... Absolutely. I think hopefully out of all of the difficult right now, we will, we will, we will breathe in you. It will be like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Yeah, yeah. I think it's about change. You know, and I think that this time, I, you know, the global movement has been incredible. Absolutely. You know, the way that everyone has acknowledged that this is a global issue. I right. think it's key to people, for people to understand that this needs to be a systematic change um, across the board, you know, Absolutely. because it starts with police, right? Um, and that's what we're focusing on right now is Black Lives Matter. Right. And police brutality against them and people of color. And so I think that since we're now, I think we're now all getting on the same page that we, that's the topic and not other topics that may be distractions from the movement. Um, because in my opinion, if black lives don't matter, then all lives don't matter. Correct. Right? And, you know, I've had conversations with family. I've had conversations with a lot of, you know, friends and, you know, colleagues and all of that. And I've had to explain that part more than once, which is okay because, you know, what we have to understand is that I, I think and I hope that when people feel this and say all lives matter, that they really truly mean it. You know, from like yes. a good place in their heart. You know, well, so it's not they've actually internalized what it means, the information, because I feel like we have so many of us perhaps and, and maybe some more than others, even within a spectrum in our own minds and hearts, have lost a sense of humanity. I think I think we have in some ways been brainwashed to lose a part of it because we're more subservient in that sense to a system. Right. Um, but I think that when we continue to ask ourselves, what is your instinct telling you? What is your gut telling you? That I would say that I would hope that most humans would make decisions based on true moral conscience and humanity, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and understanding the history, you know, we have to understand the history of this country. We have to understand the history of our country, you know, uh, being that, you know, we're Latinos, right? You uh, have, uh, Argentinian and have German and Native American and you have all this gorgeousness that made you so you know who and you're you know I, I not only style you but you know I'm obsessed with all your talents and all of the the beauty that you bring and that you know that that is in due part because you're of mixed heritage you know no one is really pure right. anymore you know right. I mean and aside we... from indigenous people Correct. And we were discussing this, you know, we had our little like pre pre talk before this, because I, I thought that well, we both thought that it was important to figure out what we wanted to do right now in this discussion, because it is really a time in which we need to listen a lot and we need to learn. Um, but I also think it's important to continue to have discussions with our friends and and try to inspire others to ask themselves the same questions. So we discussed, you know, for anybody who doesn't know, obviously, Javier and I, very briefly, we met a handful of years ago, about three years ago, although it feels like a lot longer, <laughs> um, you know, and we met because Javier actually styled me for a concert and we became friends straight away and we connected because of our Latin backgrounds and we connected on a humanitarian level. And we've been discussing these kinds of things for quite some time now. And um, in fact, the last time we saw each other was downtown before we were all kind of in lockdown and we had had a great breakfast coffee after I dropped my son off at school and we had this conversation and this was yeah. you know this was like what whatever it was January or something like that yeah 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 you know? absolutely and, yeah. and 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 also I remember us you know so vividly speaking of uh of colorism mm -hmm. in, a, in in our countries uh xenophobia within our countries mm -hmm. uh that uh, racism we have to literally like unveil 
all of that because a lot of the older generation unfortunately don't want to talk about that they you know it's that feeling of being uncomfortable and a lot of people don't want to feel uncomfortable but you have to feel uncomfortable there's no other way about it you have to feel uncomfortable because then you'll understand that is an internal issue you know and then you need to look into that well, and you know, I was thinking a lot about this recently, that the idea of ego and how much a part the ego takes, or how much of a, uh, how, how the ego takes so much um, away, I think, from our learning process at times. Like if you think about going to school, right, you're uncomfortable sometimes in school when you don't understand a subject, but it doesn't always translate into your self-worth or your feelings of yourself as a person in this world. You just go, okay, I mean, sometimes it does. I mean, I certainly didn't love school, but, right. but the point is, is that generally you keep on plugging away at it and then you eventually understand, right? And I feel like if we just applied that sort of mentality to this situation, that we could learn so much and, and a lot faster because we're not allowing our egos to get in the way. We, right. don't get, we, can't, we can't get defensive about this and we can't get insulted about it because we're talking about humanity and there's just no other way, there's just no other way to grow. Um, we, so we discussed to start in a way that we would kind of discuss a little bit more about our backgrounds. Like you mentioned that I'm part Argentine. My mom's from Argentina. She moved here in the sixties. Um, she herself is an interesting mix because her, um, on her, on her mother's side, they're all from Spain, but on her father's side, her, her grandfather was French. He was a tall, I think blue-eyed blonde man, but her mother was from Santiago del Estero, and we are we are sure that this is the lineage in which we have the Native American, and yeah. so that would that's my mom's background, and then of course my father's background has a lot of different European uh, blood in it, and you know of course so many of us have done these ancestry, uh, right, right, thing. you know, and of course there's a lot of for him there's a lot of German and Irish. There's also a lot of French um, some, somewhere along those lines. And then according to 23.inme or whatever it is, I apparently have 2% Sudanese, who knew? But when you and I had this conversation, we discussed the reasons why. And so I'll let you maybe talk about a little bit about your heritage and like really delving into your background and then a little bit about the history of how that came to be. Yeah, so I was, uh... I was born here. I was born, my parents were in the army, so they're both veterans of the uh, United States Army. Um, and my two brothers, I'm a twin, uh, uh, and so my two brothers and my three, my two brothers and I were born in Georgia. But months old, we moved to Puerto Rico. My father is Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rico, and my mother is from Colombia. So I think that that has its like, you know, they said there are no mistakes in life, in life, right? And I think that uh, the reason why I, I force myself to educate myself on all of this is because I understand the Caribbean experience being Puerto Rican, and I also understand the immigrant experience being from uh, having Colombian parents, right? Colombian mother. Um, also, when we go deeper, we understand that we are Tainos, that we are Chichas, that we are, you know, every, we have all our own indigenous people, right? So it's like, when we talk about Black Lives Matter, you know, bringing it to that, like, we have to say, this is our lives. This is what we're all saying. Latinos are African, indigenous, and Spanish. That is who we are. That, that is, there's no way around that. That is something that this generation needs to understand. For my brothers and sisters who are black and say they're not black because they're Dominican or they're Puerto Ricans or whatever it is, please stop. Please yeah. stop because I think the question that you ask yourself is where is your grandmother from? Take it back, take it back to those generations. And then you'll understand that your roots are your roots. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we still have so many injustices that are happening, especially with our, our, our indigenous communities. Um, you know, we're taking their land still. This was the conquistador mentality back in the day and it's still happening. 
you know, if you think about it with ICE detention centers where they are separating our families and now we have two, lot, two souls that have died due to coronavirus, um, it's like we're reliving what happened, right? What, ha what happened to our ancestors? We are reliving it, and it's just, I think that it creates the trauma, right? That mental trauma of us having, now that we're learning this history, especially now with Black history, when you understand what has happened, when you understand that for 400 years, they, they tried, they tried to build their wealth, they tried, you know, they created, you know, Black uh, Wall Street, which was right. burnt to the ground. And, yep. you know, you see the peaceful protests, Kobe, you know, uh, Colin taking a knee, not giving his career back. I don't understand how that hasn't happened just yet. Like, you know, they, they so many of them tried peacefully to say Black Lives Matter. Right. And it just didn't, it didn't happen. So when I went, you know, I, I don't condone violence. I don't condone any of that. Any, but I also don't condone judging people. And if you don't understand that pain, don't say anything. Like, you know what I mean? Just understand, like, what has happened. Understand the history, you know? And I think that's why I created Latinx Heroes, because I understand that education is key. Right. We have to listen and we have to pay attention to our past. So, you know, with Latinx Heroes, I, I, I honor the past, I highlight the present, and I protect the future by teaching the younger generations who we are. Right. You know? Especially right. now in June, that is gay pride. Like, people should know who Silvia Rivera was. Right. Silvia Rivera was a transgender woman of color de Puerto Rico y de Venezuela. She is considered one of the mothers of the movement. You know what that means? Like, one of the mothers of the movement is of us. Right. So when people need to understand her, Marsha P. Johnson, because that's a Black figure, an amazing, amazing woman, who, because of her, because of them, we are here. Because of them, I I married to an Argentine, <laughs> right? And Colombian, he's half Colombian as well. So I am very well aware of the privilege that I have, the privilege that I, the, even though I, you know, because one of the things that you and I spoke of was being the only one at, right? So we were the only Latinos within this. We were, you know, I worked for Escada when you and I met, and I was right. the only executive who was Latino, right. being the director of visuals. Like, that is kind of crazy. Do you right. know what I'm saying? And so that's when you start talking about it. Is it just tokenism? Is it, am I like a box that I'm being right. tagged? Like, yeah. oh, and I think companies have that responsibility Absolutely. to look, with, look within your own structure and see what yeah. you're doing. Absolutely. I mean, and I think this is exactly what the Black community is also talking about right now and what they are expressing too. And they will express, you know, they, 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 I will not, I, I, I want to be very careful because I'm not speaking for the Black community. I am just, in a sense, I am regurgitating what I'm hearing and what I'm learning in order to pass it on. So I am by no means an authority at all. I am just trying to be a conduit of a message in right. the best way and the most respectful way that I can. But what I understand is that, you know, nobody wants to feel that they are part of a group for token, you know, on base, the basis of tokenism or anything like that, that we have to be better than that. And we have to realize that we are uh, involving people in our lives and our businesses based on the fact that they are all excellent, that we can, we can, talent. All, we can right. all be excellent and there is talent and there is talent. And then it goes to the bottom of it because then we go into education and then right. we go, then we have to deal with that route. So that's the thing, like there's so many systematic changes that need to happen. And that's why people are calling to defund the police, right? To take right. some of those millions of dollars and put in black back into the communities of color because right. education is not the same, because the opportunities are not the same. So, you right. know, people of color have to fight 
double, triple, you know, have to work, have to put themselves through school because, you know, there's so many injustices that need to, that need to be fixed. So right. this is a global movement and everybody right. needs to be involved. Everybody needs to do their part. And, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic, right? So a lot of folks can go out to the streets. Right. So get on social media, sign those petitions, you know, make sure that you have registered to vote Both. in your primaries, you know, make Both sure in the that primaries, you please. Yes. Please. Listen, you know, today is Georgia's primary. Right. I've already sent it out to my friends in Georgia. Just reminders, just right. reminders. And this is the, this is how it shows how we're all getting so involved because this was not normal. You no. know what I mean? To be so involved. We, no. Politics also, is something that nobody talked about. Also, the thing that people also don't realize is how important this, the, um, the U.S. Uh, census is, yes. actually. Yes. This is a really important thing. And I started, I, I haven't gotten very far into it, but I'm actually reading the Constitution. Yes. Um, and I, uh, I started just reading it, my mother and I, well, and I, I, Javier, I don't know if you've met my mother or not, but she's a highly intelligent, very uh, somewhat vicious woman, but she's... Um, she's she's really uh she's she's very um acute in her thinking anyway we started reading it together a couple nights ago and we're going to continue i think but in the first article i think it is it talks about the census and what the census creates it creates the numbers that then all the other numbers are based off of like if you have 100 people in this area, then you need more representatives. And more representatives ultimately leads to more votes. Right. So if there is not a correct number in the census, we're, we're messing things up from the start. Right. 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 And then, of course, there are all sorts of other issues, right, that we have to deal with. But that's something that I didn't, I have to tell you that for most of my life, I was like, oh, it's such a hassle, the census, you know? Yeah, but because, just, again, we just lived in our privilege. And it was correct. normal. It was absolutely correct. normal. And that's what things uh american and the world needs to think is is not only white privilege right there's mm -hmm. also latino privilege and yes. us being the color that we are versus being afro latinos like i mean uh, i i just found out a case in, in colombia um it's so sad his name is anderson um Arbo, arboleno arboleno something like this i'll get the name i just posted about him so everybody can know about him but he was just killed by police. And this is the same thing that always has happened in Colombia. You know, like I remember going to Colombia and Colombia is beautiful. Colombia is absolutely stunningly, gorgeously beautiful that I didn't understand why I thought Colombia was this place. And then I understood that media play, played a part, right? So it's like the television is just showing me violence and violence and violence, which is what's happening globally right now, according to the media out there, is that other parts of the globe are saying what a mess we are. And because of the administration, you know, which, you know, that's a long conversation. But, you know, those things need to change. We need to change from a local level to the state level to the federal level. We need to yes. change faces. We need to be re represented. Everyone should be represented. So to right. me, the White House, number one, should change the color of that White House and change the name. Because you are saying that the most important address in the entire America is the White House. Right. We don't have to change the address now because it's 1600 Black Lives Matter Plaza. Hey, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? I but love we it. should be changing that house to a beige or yeah. something more inclusive that represents the people. And then you get into the building and make sure that you have trans people who are part of the government. You make sure that LGBTQIA community members in there. You make sure that there's black people. You make sure that there's Asian. You make sure that there's Indian. And yes. not criticize when like four strong women come into the White House of color and you just go attack them. Correct. Because well, AOC, can, watch we can, out. <laughs> we can also get into the conversation of misogyny. Because the minute you start to speak to somebody, you go back to the roots of humanity, that this is another human being standing in front of you and they deserve your honest respect and you, they deserve everything that you want in your life as well. And there's just, there's just no other 
options. <laughs> exactly, exactly. There's no other option. And I think that you hit it on the head because humanity needs to come back. And I think that coronavirus knew that. Uh, coronavirus has shined light on so many of the issues that we have had to deal with many, 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 many years. We have been paused to really shine a light on the things that matter. So if you think about the things that we idolize, money, the economy is the economy right now. Right, well, and-, and Where the, the fans, thing, go ahead. The, I'm, I'm sorry, I was gonna say that economy is a huge part of this conversation because this, this country was founded on the blacks who were brought here, who were stolen from their homes to come here as slaves was to was in order to create the economy of this country, right? It was about money. Right, because it, they it hasn't killed stopped. what they found here first, you know? So I think again, like Latinos, I encourage, you know, I, I tend to also speak to Latinos just because, you know, I'm Latino. I think it's very important for people to speak to their own people and say, yo, What's that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I don't like, you know, like you, like, like you, we don't speak to the black people to tell them how they should feel, how they should react, what they should be said. Like, no, that's that. You know what I mean? Like, that is the respect that we owe them. If they re if they're reacting the way they're reacting, I don't want to speak about, you know, the looting, the this and that, when we're taking kind of like the focus away of what the real thing is. And the way that I think about it is, you know, when you have a fight with your, as a human being, right? When we have a fight with someone, the first reaction is anger. You're mad and you're upset and, you know, some people just break things and some people just, you know, that's like a human reaction, right? Some of us understand that we should not react from that emotion, right? So that's the moment that some of us say, you know what, I need a minute, I'll be right back before something else happens, right? Some just do what they need to do, you know? And so if we think about it in that way, you know, when you're in an abusive relationship for 400 years, because people need to understand that, yes, this is very much ignited by George Floyd, but this is about the racism, the history of racism in this country. So all my Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, for even the beating for Rodney King back in the, like there's so much, there's, there's many examples. And again, they try peacefully. Uh, Martin Luther King is the perfect example of right. peace. And we all know what happened to him. So that's, I think, what we need to understand. There's a great book that is called uh, The African American and Latinx History of the United States. And it's by Paul Ortiz. And, you know, it's really, it's a great book for, for anyone to read, uh, you know, because once I think you understand, you understand the history of other folks, then compassion comes in, empathy comes in, yeah. and then yeah. respect comes in. You know what right. I mean? Because you're like, wow, like, even though, right, slavery right. per se didn't happen to, like, me, like, I'm still, like, that is, I, I can't even think about it. What I can't think about, though, is how my Tainos were killed. What I can't think about is how all of our indigenous people, there is a genocide in this country that happened, you know, in these countries, because it's all through the Americas and the Caribbean, 70 plus million indigenous. Right. Right. A genocide of 70 plus, and you know, we speak of this, and the, what I, knew about the unfortunate Holocaust, right? And I, and I knew about that, and I understand 5 million, 6 million, 7 million, something like that, you know, unfortunately souls left us. But when we, when, when I, and, and I wanna keep this here, right? But I need to go here first. Like I need to, I, I love going into the roots of the problem, I need, I love, so, can we like make the indigenous people feel right? Can we, can we give them their land back? Can we stop burning their forests? I saw a map the other day. Now I don't know how accurate it is because I honestly, I, I doubt, I, I distrust almost everything I read on the internet, right? 
but um, I did see a map the other day that had, was sort of delineating across the United States and up into obviously present day Canada and moving south all of the, the delineations for the different Native American tribes that were in this country before we arrived. And it was so interesting, of course, because you, you learn about them a little bit if you're interested in the history of where you might be traveling to. This, you know, New York, the island of Manhattan, the island, Staten Island, I mean, these were, this, they lived here, they had, this is where they were living and across all the way to the West Coast. Central America, South America. Yeah. Right, exactly. And when we look into, um, again, this DNA, you know, uh, stuff that we've got going now, we learn how all of the indigenous people came not only to North America, like we said, and to South America as well. There was no so, borders. This there's border no, right. concept is conquistadores. This is not right. us. We didn't create, right. we don't create walls. We create bridges. Sure. You exactly. know, I, I know my Taino yes. Indians, my Taino Indians literally died because they came out with wooden swords because they right. didn't want to kill the enemy. They just wanted to hurt the enemy so they wouldn't kill them. Right. Do you see what I mean? Like that is our soul. Like that yes. is so telling. And this is, I have to say that this is one of these true, I think, personal reckoning moments in which you have to reckon with yourself and you have to, like I said, look into your history. And I feel like there's something, you know, this country has such an interesting history in and of itself in, in what it espouses to be and what, what it says it wants to be in its constitution. And I think there's a lot of good in what it says it wants to be. Right. Uh, how we've followed through with it, I'm less, you know, <laughs> in agreement. <laughs> right. But if you think, if you think about it, like, it's a country, right, in which we have said everybody should be able, you know, the big apple, right, the big melting pot. We talk about this as this country is this big melting pot that you should be able to come here and, and create a life for yourself um, no matter where you come from, right? But in fact, that is a big lie. It is a gigantic, gigantic lie. And on top of it, I feel like the white people in this country who keep up, oh, especially now, you know, who say, go back to your country and all this kind of stuff have completely missed the boat. Yeah, because they don't understand that they need to go back. Because we're we, here. We all need to go back. We're here, right. We're, all, we're home. Indigenous people are home. Like, you need to go back. Anyway. There's going to be percentages of, of so many people. Right? Exactly. And what so you do with that be... is, is that you learn about your history. You learn about who your uh, German heroes are. You learn about who your Irish uh, heroes are. You learn about all that because then you have a sense of root. You can't have root in this country because this is not your country. So you got to have to find where that is. If you're from Italy, find out who are those great, um, great heroes from Italy, you know? Like, that is how we then battle that, you know? Because right. I think that, unfortunately, African-Americans and, you know, uh, uh, also the white uh, Americans, you know, it's really difficult. And I'm going to say especially for African-Americans because they don't have somewhere to identify. Right, like you, I can call out Puerto Rico. I can call out Colombia as my root, as my thing. Right, Mexicans, you know, and we normally say that we are from the countries that we're from, not just like I'm south from South America. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Like we're very Absolutely. proud. Absolutely, and proud. this is so interesting because this is something I'm still trying to um, verbalize or understand uh, myself in that. Um, how did, how did what we call white people, right? How did white people, and I include this, I include myself in this, I'm, I'm a white skinned person, mm -hmm. right? That how did white people in this country and historically in this country forget their heritage? How is it that they forgot that they were a lot of them British? How did a lot of them forget that they came from England? How did we forget all of this information and when we say we're American, we have completely nullified all of our backgrounds and created this this word in a sense, American, right? That it means what now? Because now what it means is something very negative actually right. because of the way it's been used. 
Whereas it used to, before you to be able to say, I'm an American now, used to be a pride point. Yeah. It used to be, it used to be being part of a, a group, part of a group of various people, part of a country that allowed you perhaps as a minority to have a job that you couldn't have in your own country, right? Oh, this is Scott, interesting. He's saying white people didn't forget. We just rewrote history to benefit white supremacy. Yes, I agree. Thank you, that's Scott I, I Island. Agree. Yes. <laughs> I do agree. And I, but I wonder if in order to be, like I, my cousin says a lot that, that greed is the virus. In order to do these things and in order to, to justify the mistreatment of other human beings that you need to, in some ways, disown yourself from your own humanity, right? Which means disowning your past, disowning anybody that you might have affiliations with in that sense, disowning whether you have parents that come from a different land, right? And so maybe that's part of the process because I've been trying really hard to understand when I watch people or news anchors who report news that I go, do you hear yourself speaking? Like, why are you discussing this right now? Like, why are you saying, like, do you not have an ounce of humanity? And I'm wondering, is, it, is this the process? Has it been an active process of disowning everything so that- And not even recording justify. at times. There, there's no record of a lot of history. So there's a lot of people that I do think are like, agree, agree with Scott. There's some people who just know what's up and they choose to live in their privilege and they choose to stay there because they're comfortable there. There's nothing wrong with their world in right. their mind. They're right. fine but the rest of the world sees it differently. You know what I'm saying? So if, if for instance, Black Wall Street, if, if Black Wall Street wasn't put in histories until 1997. So I didn't know that growing up. I didn't know what happened, but now all of this is happening and what am I doing? I'm educating myself along with, alongside my brothers and sisters because Again, when you understand the rage because they have tried so much, they have tried, and they're only asking for equality. They're not yeah. asking for preference. They're not asking, they just want equality. So as a human being, how do you not see that? Yeah. Do you know what I, I mean? I, like, I know that I, we talked about like Haley, right? For anybody who hasn't seen this video, but, but um, a, a black woman was discussing this video that she had seen of this young girl uh, who had been telling her parents basically like black lives matter, like they should be allowed this, that. I, did, I didn't actually see the video she had been referring to. I just listened to her speak about it. And the long and the short of it is that the fact that you can as a white person even sit there and discuss the fact that some other human deserves the right whether to Whether they human. deserve it or not. Right, whether they deserve the, that they, the fact that you can say that- Have that conversation is an issue in and of itself. Right. And it right. just is because this should be a given. This idea, I've said this many times, Black Lives Matter, yes, just acknowledge it. And because it has not been acknowledged before, it should have been a given before. And yeah. so since it was not a given before, it has to be said now. And that doesn't negate your life mattering or my life. Again, that's ego. When you hear Black Lives Matter and you think, what about my life? That's just ego. And you just have to get through that as a human being. And it's selfish. It's selfish. Like, again, think about the community. Think about the global human race. Like, when you talk about that, it's like, you know, I'm not going to mention names because I don't want to give people uh, more light but that they deserve. But, right. you know, there's people even in the African-American community who are going after George Floyd and his uh, background and all right. of this. And I was appalled. I was just like, what? Yeah. Like, how dare you? How dare you do something like that right now when nobody's saying is this is about his record. Nobody's saying why. What we're saying is that no human being deserves to have a knee on his neck. Yes, I, I think this is all extremely important. And I think, can you tell everybody once one more time what the book is that you recommend that people read? Yeah, it's an African-American and Latinx history of the United States. And the author is Paul Ortiz, who was Paul a Chicano. Great. That's amazing. And then um, there's another book right now that I'm sure everybody knows about called White Fragility. 
that I think is a really good book to start reading. I've, I've only just started, so I'm, I'm very new And to understand it. that once you start learning all these gorgeous, beautiful histories, like your mind, especially now that we're in coronavirus mode, where we can't leave, right? We shouldn't be going outside. I mean, I, I'm protesting, but I, I literally wear like three <laughs> Yeah, you're like, a bandana like I, you know i i'm more afraid of the corona than any cop or whatever but um right. i think right. that i think that right now we need to we need to just come together understand other countries other cultures because then your mind gets to travel you get to go outside and you get to see other you know we've had the privilege of being able to travel globally and we understand what that means, right? And we understand, like, I, I first started understanding that the power of media. When you start traveling to other uh, countries and you, for instance, turn on their news, you understand that what's coming through is what they want you to know. Right. So everyone needs to understand that. You know, that's why yes. research is so important. It's so important for you to know your, the, what are you watching? The networks that you know you're watching, like for instance, PBS, call me a nerd, call me whatever, call me whatever. But PBS, Miss Amy uh, Goodman on Democracy Now! is absolutely brilliant. Juan Gonzalez is absolutely brilliant. Giamish Alcinzor is absolutely brilliant. I mean, these, you, you have to do the work. You have to do the work and to see what you're putting in front of you, what is coming into your head, because I literally saw a story after number 45 went in front of that uh, church, and we know what that horrible moment was. There was publication for his side that Literally, and I'll send it to you because I think you're gonna laugh. Um, how Nancy Pelosi was so upset that he did this, and she, they show her ripping up a Bible. Never happened, right? But literally, the message that is going to the camp is that this happened. And then Trump got back to her by building a 300 foot Bible. I'm going to send it because I, I, I swear to God, my cousin Fernand sent it to me and I was like, and he lives in Texas. Do you see what I'm saying? So people really, really, what I say, just really take a look at your resources, really take a look at who, who are the people around you. Take a look at your inner circle and really see what's going on there. Because if your yeah. core is not tight. And also, you know, I think the last thing we can do before we're, we're well, we still have a little time, but we can we can discuss maybe the questions that people could ask themselves. Like somebody asked them, somebody asked a question I saw on Facebook the other day that I thought was a really interesting question, and it was a very simple one. And it was, um, at what age were you? At what age did you have a black teacher in your school? I remembered, of course, that my school nurse in elementary school, so kindergarten through eighth grade, or I can't remember what year she started. I think it was, well, I remember her being a part of my life my whole life, right? Um, Linda Brown was our school nurse and she was a black woman and she was our school nurse. And, and that was it. We never thought, you know, we never thought anything of it. She was our school nurse. And so I feel in some ways I feel, um, I, I, I look back at that and I go, I'm glad that that was there. And, and yet still, I, uh, I see how, how, how much work there's still to be done. My first black teacher was Mr. Cojasso, who was my science teacher in third grade. And he was my father's teacher, my father's science teacher when he was in elementary school. Wow. So he is an Afro Latino man who I knew, but again, my grandmother is, was Afro Latina. She is Una negra bella. She is beautiful queen. Beautiful, 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 right? And I grew up with her as a role model, right? I grew up with my parents and my brother and everybody, right? But you gravitate to somebody in your life. And for me, it was my grandmother and it makes complete sense. Because, I mean, I, the love and respect that I have for my grandmother 
who, you know, people would say que tiene el pelo malo, who has kinky right. hair, you know, which is, again, verbiage that we need to uh, fix. Because to me, it was a beautiful cotton ball. It was gorgeous. She had white, 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 white hair, and she was just black, gorgeous. So because I grew up with that, and that's why visibility is so important, and that's why the entertainment business fights for inclusion and diversity and all that, because we have to see each other. The first time that I saw myself in Hollywood was when I saw John Leguizamo, because I was like, oh my God, there's another Colombian and Puerto Rican person in the world. I really thought it was just my brothers and I, mm. because I grew up in Puerto Rico and we right. were the kids of the Colombian lady, because we were the only Colombians in my town. <laughs> Do you right. know what I mean? But right. I grew up with many examples of that. My twin brother is white. He, there's a picture I'm sharing with you one day. My twin brother is was white, blonde, and then my uh, older brother, our older brother is uh, Indian Taino. So he had like this jet black hair, like just Indian. And then me, who is like a mix. Of, right. And literally, this is how I grew up. Yeah. And this is how most of us grow up in our countries. So when people say like, man, I don't know racism because I didn't experience it. Some of us really didn't experience it. Not to say that there's no racism and colorism in Puerto Rico or any of that, because there is. But, but when your circle and your nucleus is taking care of you in such a way that you're able to just really see people, you know what I'm saying? Like just, and understand and be empathetic and have compassion. I think that is such key for 2020 for uh, races to uh, all around to to really have compassion and empathy. And at this moment, we need to have empathy and compassion and respect for Black lives. 100%. I could not agree with you more. I think um, I think on that note, we we can leave everybody listening uh, and to say perhaps as you go and think about these things throughout your day, read these books. Don't be afraid about having to read books in their entirety. Just start somewhere. Watch the videos that you see. Really listen to the Life voice. history for morons. Go watch right. it. It's on do whatever, do whatever it is that you need to do. And, and think as you're going through this that you're not just trying to educate yourself about somebody else, but you're just listening to other humans speak that you probably had not listened to before or it hadn't been put into your into your consciousness consciousness and and just also identify in that moment why perhaps it wasn't put into your into your field of sight accept that as it a thing it. it's you know? painful but we can accept it and we can move through it and honestly i've heard many people say you know if we are uncomfortable for a while for now that's okay because we have had friends of ours in the black community and in other communities, of course, that have been uncomfortable for their entire lives. And it, it is okay for us to be uncomfortable. So like I said, I am no authority. I don't speak for anybody. I love what you talk about when you talk about compassion and education. And I think that that's really the basis of all of this. So I just, I love you so much, Javier. And I love, I love having, you too. I love listening to you and hearing all of the things that you know and the knowledge that you bring to this conversation as well. And I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, my love. You're wow. so, so welcome. I can't wait to see you in I person. I know, we need a good, a good, good, good hug. Good, good hug. But I'm sending you a virtual hug and hug your son for me and your mom. And we'll, we'll chat soon. Thank you. And do me a favor, send me the link of the book if you have a link to I will. And I'll also post it for the chat and so people can click on the link and kind of get there. Perfect, the yeah. And I'll send you the audio uh, version as well, where some people Great. don't, don't want to read, then just listen yeah. to it. There's many Perfect. options. Google, Google. And the and last thing that I do want to say is for my white friends and other people who are not Black, do the research. Do the research yourselves. Because when we ask Black people to explain to us what they feel and how they can make it better, they are reliving the trauma each and every time 
they explain their family struggle. They explain that their grandfathers were slaves. They explain, so if we're friends of the Black community, let's not have them go through that pain over and over and over and over again. Let's do the research. We all have Wi-Fi. We all have Google. Just, you know what I'm saying? We can yeah. all do the work. And also, and also pick, even if it's just one person in your life, your friend, but have the conversation. Have the conversation. Make sure I that can... your circle, your yeah. own table, that yeah. there's a seat for an yeah. African American someone, that there's yeah. a seat for someone who is trans, that there's exactly. a seat for someone who is, you know, LGBT or whatever. Like you have to, as a human being, we can guarantee it, your life would be so much better. So much better. So much better. I agree. Better. I agree. And it's okay. And social media is one of these funny things, you know, and we talked about this too. And I said, of course, you know, I don't want to pretend that in our conversation right now that I know what to say or that I know how to move forward. And, and I, and this is not about um, a brand and this is not about anything, but I think we also acknowledge that we do have people we know we can reach through this particular platform. I know I'm going to personally have private conversations and I've had private conversations mm -hmm but I'm going to have more of them. And I already have a group of my friends. There's maybe about eight of us, but we're gonna have a conversation between the eight of us. We all, to, we all happen to be white. And, and we're going to do this because we need to have these conversations. And then uh, we will eventually continue to expand the conversations to more and more people um, to continue educating. And then eventually we continue to expand it to all the other cultures of people that we know. It's not to be exclusionary, but it's so that we can deal with things without, like you said, without causing pain to anybody else in the process. Absolutely. And then come across like I'm working right now on uh, creating a virtual pride uh, Latino uh, event, you know, uh, highlighting Afro Latinos and highlighting the people of color who have made a difference within the LGBTQIA community, because that's what we should be doing now. And, you know, we can have a little you know, DJ party afterwards and not that's great, but let's have a panel discussion first. Let's make sure that, you know, again, the, the representation across the board in that panel says, this is who we are. Just like I preach, the Supreme Court needs to look like us. Right now, we as Latinos are lucky to have Sonia Sotomayor sit, sitting there, but there's the African-American community may have someone in there who looks like them. Unfortunately, a lot of them don't think that he's really rooting for them. So again, where is the trans judge? Where is the Asian judge? Where is the Indian judge? Let's make sure this is America. This is what America looks like. America is not white. So we yeah. have to then have, have that representation Fair for represent people. Start running, start voting, get, yes. get involved. And you know, we can make it, we can make it work. I agree. I'm with you. Mwah, kisses. I'm with we you. can sit here and talk forever. Un besote. Igualmente, mi amor. Chao. I love you. Bye.